Well, we're preparing for another ice storm, so it's time to get the animals and all of the buildings around the homestead secured and ready because they're predicting a bad one. Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. This is Kevin and Sarah. Well, uh, like I said, we are predicted to get a big ice storm uh, probably tomorrow night. Uh, so we are trying hard to get everything ready today. Um, they said it could start as early as, you know, early tomorrow afternoon, uh, but by tomorrow night we could be getting a big sheet of ice just covering everything. Uh, just north of us they're about to have a big snowstorm, and just south of us they're about to get a bunch of rain. And because we're right in the middle, our temperatures are going to hover just a little bit above and a little bit below freezing, uh, which means we're going to get just a big sheet of ice. Uh, we've known about this for a couple of days. So yesterday we did our monthly uh, grocery shopping to make sure that the house is stocked up. Um, and today we needed to go into town and uh, stock up on hay. And uh, we've already gotten feed, but um, also gasoline just in case we need to run our generators. Right. It's not uncommon. Uh, when we get ice storms like this for the uh, power to go out um, and definitely to be you know kind of stuck uh, at home for at least a few days um, we just need to be prepared uh, we need to most importantly make sure that the animals are ready to make it through uh, potentially a few days of some really kind of yucky weather so we're just gonna bring you guys along with us to each of the animal areas while we kind of in you know uh, look at things uh, make sure uh, that we're doing what we can and just making sure that the animals are uh, safe and secure. So. Now most of this hay is for our goats. And in case you're wondering, uh, we feed our goats brome hay. Um, they seem to really like it and uh, it, you don't have to worry about the GMO issues that you do with alfalfa hay. Now uh, that reminds me, we also want to start doing a, a Q and A uh, video every once in a while. So if you guys have questions about things that we do around the home, so that you'd like us to answer uh, directly in a video instead of in a comment, uh, leave those questions below on this video, and then we'll put them together into a Q and A. The first stop is over. Uh by our buck, uh, our uh, Nigerian dwarf buck. He actually has a visitor right now, our doe, we're breeding her. Uh, and so we need to give them uh, their normal hay for the day, but we're also going to be adding uh, some extra grass hay uh, into their enclosure. Uh, now that enclosure works super well for them. Uh, they keep nice and cozy, warm in there together, snuggle up uh, by each other, so it'll be just perfect for them. As you can see, uh, we have them in uh, electric netting. Uh, it works really well for them, uh, and that way we can move them, their area, from uh, time to time. And I already made sure that their water wasn't frozen, so they're good to go for now. Uh, we're gonna have to come out tomorrow, even if you know, even if the weather is bad. But uh, let's get some of the work done. Now we're gonna head over to our rabbit tractors and make sure they're all taken care of as well. So now we're out in the pasture by the rabbit tractors. Uh, we have five rabbit tractors that we're using right now. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is move them for the day because we haven't moved them yet today, so that they're on fresh grass, and then. Uh, we'll put a bunch of hay inside of the tractors. All right, so if you remember earlier in the winter, in the fall, I built a little air divider here so that they have a nice secure area uh, to be able to go in. Uh, so what we're gonna do is just uh, put a bunch of hay down in this area just so that if the ice gets real bad, or if at first it's rain, uh, they can get up off the ground just a little bit. And uh, now, as soon as the weather clears up, we'll take this back out because uh, this will stop the uh, urine and everything from being able to go down into the ground as much. So uh, as soon as they don't need this anymore, we'll take it out. And inevitably, they'll probably eat half of it. 
So we're going to do this to all of the tractors. That's really all these guys need uh, because rabbits really do pretty well. And it's not supposed to get super, super cold. Uh, just just kind of nasty. So uh, these guys should be fine. All right, so we're over in our chicken area. And, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot to get ready for them outside here. Uh, but I did make sure that they're, you know, that we went today and we got plenty of chicken feed for them. Um, they, their feeder will hold about 200 pounds of feed. I put about 100 pounds in there today. Uh, and that should get them through at least a couple weeks. So there shouldn't be any worries about them running out of food. Um, normally, in good weather, we have them on an automatic waterer as well. Uh, but that's all frozen up this time of year. Uh, so I'm actually moving a water pan inside their house for them this time of year so that uh, it stays, uh, you know, doesn't freeze up as easily. So most of what we have to do with them, just like the other animals, is making sure that they're in a place where they will stay dry and out of the wind. Uh, let's head inside and I'll show you what we're doing in there. All right, so inside the chicken coop, I'm just going to put down a fresh layer of uh, hay on top of what's already in there. Um, I boarded up their window uh, for the winter um, so that it keeps all the cold air, you know, the drafts out. Um, and we also have a light in here on a timer, uh, which seems to really help with uh, having them lay all winter long. We're still getting just as many eggs now uh, as we do in the summer. So I'm just going to go in and spread this around. And they'll spread this around by themselves so I don't really need to worry about you know spreading it great I just kind of break up the chunks throw them on the ground and they take care of scratching it all up and just yesterday I refilled all of the nesting boxes with new new hay so I don't need to do that today I know that those are good and now if they need to stay in here for a few days they'll be they'll be all set The ducks don't want to be left out. They always need to be part of the action. So I'm just giving them food. They do great in the cold weather. So one change that we made on our homestead this winter, and it was probably about, oh, three weeks ago or so, we brought our young goats into this uh, area of our poultry barn because one of our goats started, getting, started to get a cough and we ended up having to treat her so we had all three of the doelings come into this section of the poultry barn and we've uh, turned it into their kind of temporary home for the winter. So I've got my little girls in here uh, keeping warm and protected. This one here, Coco, she's the one that had a cough and, uh, and I just didn't want it to turn into pneumonia. That's actually the second most common killer of uh, goats is pneumonia. Uh, they are going to be my special breeders. Um, and uh, we're going to start breeding these guys um, in April of this year. I really needed them to remain healthy, uh, and so we brought them in here. They're actually really enjoying it. There really isn't a whole lot for us to do in here. We have their minerals um, in here, and uh, we're keeping their water in here, too, uh, to make sure that it doesn't uh, freeze as solid as if it were outside. And then we also uh, feed them their hay in here just to keep it dry um, and to encourage them to uh, come in here when the weather is bad. So this will be their little hideaway when the bad weather comes and uh, they'll be safe and sound. If they want to get out in the terrible weather, they have a little um, door to go in and out of into a run area. So that's what we're doing for these guys today. Animals aren't the only thing that needs to stay dry and warm during the during an ice storm. Uh, what I like to do is I've already loaded all of the firewood that we're going to need in the house for the next couple days. Uh, but then I also filled up my wheelbarrow and this garden cart full of dry, for, full of wood and brought it in here. That way, if we do happen to run out while it's really, really nasty outside, I don't need to go to the pile and load everything in and bring it in. I have these all ready to go. I can just run out here, grab a cart full and bring it inside. Just makes it a lot easier and makes me a lot happier when I don't have to do that in the really cold, nasty weather. Now let's head over to the greenhouse. So uh, there's a couple things we're gonna do in there uh, to try to prepare 
uh, just in case uh, we would happen to get more of the snow side of what's supposed to be coming. Uh, we don't want it to collapse the greenhouse. All right, so we're inside the greenhouse. Uh, you can see that it's kind of turned into my workshop out here because it's so nice in here. Um, today it is in the upper 20s, low 30s, and right now it's about 60 degrees in here and no wind. So that's awesome. So I've been doing a lot of work out here uh, on the greenhouse itself and on other projects. So um, you can see uh, I got all of the tables finished. Um, I've made uh, basically they're sawhorses so that uh, we have two by fours across that'll hold all of our trays. I do still plan on draping them with uh, plastic uh, to help protect the wood a little bit more. Uh, but this was an inexpensive way to build you know tables for the whole uh, greenhouse. And we can take these down and take them with us to the farmer's market uh, easily when we uh, take plants to the farmer's market. So that was a win, uh, being able to use them for two things. Uh, so in here, uh, to get ready for the uh, ice, um, there's not a whole lot to do. Um, but, uh, you know, we just want to uh, add some support beams to the center section of the greenhouse. Uh, this is actually a tip that was given to us by the manufacturers of the greenhouse. Uh, we got this at growersolution.com if you want to check them out. Um, but basically, uh, all we're going to do is add a 2x4 in two different spots. Um, I've already put this one here. Um, and it just helps in case there would get a lot of snow or ice that would start to push down on the center. Uh, this will help hold it up. So you can come down here and I'll put this other one up. Now these are only temporary. When the weather's good, we can take these back down. So uh, all it is, I've just taken a 2x4 and cut a notch in the end. And then they suggest every third uh, rung on the greenhouse to just put one of these up. And then I've just got a board here on the ground. So it'll just wedge in there. It's not pushing up. Uh, the goal isn't to you know, push up on the greenhouse. It's just in there enough so that nothing can push down. So that's it. Uh, in here, it should stay fine. Um, this uh, right here, since I guess you guys are probably going to wonder what this is. Uh, it's not a coffin. Uh, what this is, is actually when we lived in Arizona, this was our solar dehydrator, food dehydrator. Uh, but I'm in the process of converting it into something for the greenhouse. So as soon as I get it done, uh, I'll show you guys what that is. And I think it's going to be pretty awesome and help us be able to get plants out here even faster. Uh, we went to the uh, uh, greenhouse supply store uh, in Springfield the other day, uh, which is about a couple hours from where we live, and picked up all of our supplies. Uh, so we're, we're set to go. We've got our trays, our pots. We've got our... Uh, our uh, material here for starting seeds and then back here I built our raised bed uh, so we're gonna be starting some lettuce and things like that in here before too long um, and that'll be mostly for us but gosh I'm so excited to get some fresh green veggies in our diet again it's been hard over the winter when we just don't have those fresh veggies but one exciting thing is that just today uh, I saw one of our very first uh, cold weather or early spring wild edibles coming up uh, which is uh, chickweed. Uh, chickweed is awesome and makes great salads uh, so what I'm actually going to do before this ice storm comes and you know maybe kills it again uh, is I'm going to dig some of that up today and I'm going to bring it in here and transplant it uh, so we can hopefully have a real early uh, jump start on that so I'm super excited about that. So you guys, we're all set in the house. We've done the grocery shopping. We've got our water saved up. Kevin brought in the wood. Uh, so we're set inside. Yeah, so we're gonna be safe. Uh, we went to the store. We got all of our hay. Uh, we got our feed. Uh, I've made sure all of the uh, animals have extra water. Uh, and I've made sure that my generator has plenty of gas in the case uh, we lose power. Uh, if you haven't seen the video where I show how we have our well hooked up so that we can run our well pump off of the generator. I'll put a link to that up here. Uh, so uh, I can hook our generator right to the well. That will run the heat lamp inside of the well house so our pipes won't freeze. And it'll also allow us to continue to have running water in the house uh, during times when the power is out. So we're all set. You guys, thanks so much for stopping by to 
see what we're doing out here. We really appreciate it. Uh, before you go, don't forget to subscribe, comment, and share. Thank you guys so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care, and God bless. God bless.